Last time on Star Trek Deep Space Nine. How exactly would you help our negotiations with the Scythians? Well, as the Nagus' official liaison with the Gamma Quadrant, I could be invaluable to your negotiations. Computer, register 10 complimentary Holosuite credits for customer Bannock. My name is Johnny. Johnny Theron. Johnny! Leave the envoy alone. Now! This airlock leads to the Scythian ship, sir. Off limits for now. The Scythians. Have you met them, Ensign? Yarrow, sir. Ensign Desma Yarrow, Starfleet Security. The captain and lieutenant. They've been here twice trying to talk to the Scythian commander and... Trying to talk to the Scythians? There's some problem? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. I mean, I may have said too much already. Computer? Open the door to Habitat Room 6A. Habitat Room 6A is inhabited. Visitors are requested to utilize the entry chime to request admission from the occupant. I've already done that. No one answered. I've just come from the ambassador's quarters. Something's wrong. He's not answering the door. Computer, activate guest summons in VQ6A. Security override Delta 65 Red. Audio. Activating. That ought to rouse His Excellency. There is no response to the guest summons. That's odd. I'm overriding the privacy seal on his quarters. The access code is Omega-738. Omega-738. Use it to let yourself in. I'll join you there as soon as I can. Computer, override the seal on visitor's quarters 6A. Access code Omega-738. Access granted. Kerrig. Don't move. And don't touch anything. What happened here, Envoy? Uh, I'm not sure. I just came in and found him like this. I, at least, I think this is him. It's him, all right, unless there was another Tyrion on board. Tyrion DNA particles. Not much left of his body structure. Whoever did this wasn't taking any chances. Odo to Cisco. Go ahead, Constable. I'm afraid our Scythian problem is more serious than we thought, Captain. Ambassador Carrick has been murdered. How much trouble are we in? Lots. We don't know who killed Carrick or why. We don't know if the killer got what he wanted or is still on the station, or whether or not this incident is linked with the Scythians. Cisco to Odo. Odo here. Constable, Vanek has volunteered to aid in your investigation. Whatever you say, Captain. He can begin by analyzing Carrick's log entries. Someone went to great trouble to obliterate them. And now, the continuation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 3 of Star Trek Deep Space Nine Harbinger. When we uh, were last here, we were trying to get to Ambassador Carrick's quarters and found out he was MURDERED in a shocking twist of events. And he seemed to be a gelatinous green blob. And uh, now we are about to go and investigates uh, his logs to see if we can see just if he had any enemies or some kind of information that will help us determine why he might have been killed. Also Cisco gave us a phaser which I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to use at some point and one thing I want to address before I start you can see here Dax is actually doing some animation stuff. When I was editing um, episode 2 together I actually noticed because I pulled footage from episode 1 as well that uh, Dax was doing some basically idle animation stuff and then she stopped after doing something so I'm actually wondering if there are actually some idle movement animations at least for ops side of things but it just bugs out and doesn't work half the time so there's that at least I mean that doesn't still forgive the the complaints I've already kind of made about the very static nature of this game so far uh, in terms of its uh, visual quality and uh, what's going on around you uh, so yeah, well, let's see how we'll proceed with episode three, and uh, let's have a let's have a chat with Dax. Envoy, a Ambassador, Bannock. I'm sorry about what happened to Cap. Oh, I have no idea what just happened there. I'm guessing she just said, "I'm sorry." Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, I appreciate your concern. Well, over the years I've seen death. Husbands, wives, mentors, friends. It's never easy to accept. You've lived how long? <laughs> Hard question to answer simply. 
My host, Jadzia, is 29 years old. My symbiont, Dax, is over 400. I'm a Trill Bannock. Some of us, a select few, are joined with a symbiont. I may look like a young woman to you, but inside me is a very old worm with many lifetimes worth of memories. We can talk more about that later. You need something? Yes, Captain Sisko mentioned something about the drones. Yes, they're beginning to reappear. A new type of vessel, but the same pattern. One appears through the wormhole every three minutes or so. Now, you'd think as uh, someone who works in the Federation that uh, the, the player character here, who is Envoy Bannock, would know what a trill is and what they're all about. But I'm guessing that was just done there for any players who don't know what trills are or if they're just playing this game and not Trek fans. Anyway. These drones are configured differently? Yes. More powerful, more phaser resistant, I think. The data is sketchy so far. Sketchy? Why? The plasma storm is up 20%. Sensor range is almost nil. Plus, they're keeping well out of range. Dax to Carlton. Dax to Ensign Carlton. Carlton, respond. That's odd. Dax to... Carlton here, Lieutenant. <sighs> Ensign. Have you finished modifying the sensor phase variants? Yeah, with wideband modulation. No luck at double scan. Don't waste time with that. Go to factor 10 and... But the scan rate... We can compensate with a focus sweep matrix. Key to a metaline structure. Right. Use latinum. It's distinctive and certainly rare enough around here. Except in quarks. I'll try it, Lieutenant Carlton out. Well, that answers that. First thing I noticed there is that when Dax touched a combat, that's the incorrect sound because I'm a fucking nerd. That should be the Starfleet combat sound, but you know, whatever. Second thing, there's an off screen character there that they're talking to. I don't think we ever actually see him, uh, but that's uh, uh, an engineer somewhere on the station. Oh, uh, what did all that mean? What Carlton said was, we don't have a visual of the drones yet, and we won't for a while. They're being considerably sneaky, Urbanic. It worries me. The same pattern, you say? So... They'll continue to build up their strike force, unit by unit, until a trigger vessel arrives. Then they'll attack all at once. If they're following the same programming sequence as the last ones did. Which seems to be the case so far. How many drones are circling the station now? Five. When will they attack, do you think? The big question. I can't say for sure, of course. But with a few educated guesses based on the latest data, matrixed with a calculated hunch, I'd say you have about an hour to coax some helpful facts out of our Scythian friends. And if I do? You might find a way to stop this useless war panic. War? What war? This isn't a war. This, this is some unknown thing attacking us. That's, that's not a war. And if I don't? We'll need every able person to help defend the station in about an hour. Thanks, Lieutenant. Okay, question. Why don't we just blow the drones up as they're coming through? From what I remember of the first attack, a uh, another drone came through and activated or, or sent a signal to the other ones. So why wait for them to build up that they could overwhelm your defenses? Just keep shooting them down every time they come through. I mean, the, the wormhole's a choke point. There's, there's no other way they could get a signal through, assuming you jam them. I don't know, this strategy of just waiting for them to build up enough forces to attack and possibly destroy you is... dumb? Just my opinion. But anyway. Okay. I guess... We're, oh yeah, here we go. So I guess we're going to do the logs now. Transmission from Ambassador Carrick, Tyrion Diplomatic Corps, United Federation of Planets, to Captain Benjamin Sisko, Starbase, Deep Space Nine, Stardate 48975.1, copy sent, Starfleet Command. Report on first contact, new race. Present designation, Scythians. Continue. Humanoid, highly developed technology, self-sustaining space stations orbiting the fourth planet in the Scythian system. Continue. At first, the species appeared somewhat xenophobic. However, further contact proved this to be a misconception. 
this this is actually kind of annoying. I'm, I'm guessing they want to give you the option to stop talking. Uh, I guess when you learn information, you can go and uh, consult with Dax or other people, but... Eh. It's just annoying to have to do it every 10 seconds. Continue. As you can see, the metallic structure of the space station has a high concentration of latinum and other valuable metallic properties. This, combined with the strategic location, would make an alliance with the Scythians extremely desirable. Continue. Despite serious linguistic difficulties, which I will elaborate on later, I was able to communicate the existence of the wormhole, the location of DS9, as well as an invitation to open informal talks with the Federation to this Scythian. Continue. Who, I have concluded, is if not the Scythian leader, then the one among them who stands above others. Though this may seem a fine point of difference to you, Captain, it is in fact a crucial distinction. In addition, I have in my possession certain items which the Federation will find of great interest and potential value. I cannot elaborate on these on an open channel. However, measures will have to be taken to assure their safety. Okay. Valuable items. That's certainly a potential motive for killing him. I have to say, I do quite like the voice actor for Carrick. Uh, he has this kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say snobbish, just kind of, yes, well, I kind of obviously know what I'm doing, and obviously the details are, are too, uh, perhaps a bit too much for you, but just just trust me that this is their lead. You know, that, that kind of attitude, and it's really been conveyed quite well by the actor. Continue. My business in the Gamma Quadrant will not be concluded for a week. Should the Scythians arrive before me, please extend them all courtesy, as I know you will. However, due to the linguistic difficulties previously mentioned, please also avoid all attempts at communication unless absolutely necessary. That is a fuck ugly ship. Sorry. Continue. Carry out and transmission. Okay. Do we... How oh, does we go here again? Transmission. Uh, okay, it's the same thing. Tyrion Diplomatic Corps, United Federation of Planets. And I can't skip dialogue. I cannot stand games where you cannot skip the dialogue. Copy sent Starfleet. Yeah, I've pressed a bunch of buttons here. Cannot skip. I mean, I, I don't understand why you, you don't allow people to skip your dialogue or cutscenes. That's all for now. Thanks. Okay, now now I'm happy they added that option to say that's enough. Okay, I take back my earlier comment that that was annoying. That, that was necessary. <laughs> anyway, let's talk to Dax. More questions, Bannock? Mm, do we need more about the drones? Some more options here? About these new drones. Here, Bannock, let's talk about Carrick's records. The ones someone tried to erase. Tried to destroy, actually. Computer, have you finished analyzing data sample A? Affirmative. What are the chances for data recovery? Complete recovery probability is zero. Chances for partial recovery? Audio data only? Using a Troyan extrapolation matrix? Probability unknown. Ha! Computer, apply the Troyan matrix to data sample A. Computer, play the result. Students, even I, talking out the language barriers to full community. Aha! That's Carrig, all right. During the Turgut talks, I learned to recognize his distinctive cadences in a room full of shouting people. Let's hear those distinctive cadences again. Computer? Students, even I, talking out the language barriers to full community. Can't we do anything about the static? The saboteur used a metamchloronide spray. There may be nothing left, Bannock. I'll see what I can do. He mentions sorting out the language barrier. Yes. Carrick may help you negotiate with the Scythians after all. I'll run the matrix on all the data and call you when it's done. Thanks, Lieutenant. Okay, well, I'm not going to go to that panel again. Okay, so... What do we do now? Should we go talk to Cisco? 
<laughs> it was still in this pose with uh, his his hand outstretched as if he's still holding a phaser. And is one arm longer than the other? Or is that just a perspective thing again? Jesus, this is terrible. Terrible. But it does seem we can talk to him, so... Let me review my assignment, Captain. Yes, Ambassador. Go ahead. I'm in charge of getting whatever information we can out of the Scythians. That is your most urgent task, Bannock. The Scythian ship is out on the docking ring. Was there anything else, Captain? Yes, Bannock. Constable Odo wants you to assist Dax. She's trying to unscramble Carrick's computer files. I'll see her, Captain. Thanks. Okay, so... Cisco served as a reminder of our objectives here. We've already talked to Dax. I assume there's nothing else here. So I guess we can actually go talk with the Scythians then. Okay, let's let's go do that. Computer. Promenade, level 7, section 5. Has anything changed in Quarks? Should we have a look? Okay, uh, is it Jani? She's not there anymore. Uh, also, I think she's human, not Bajoran. I, th I said she was Bajoran last time, but I, th I think she's actually human. Oh, there she is. And again. <laughs> uh, this, this pose. Well, hello. Would you like some of these bottles here? <sighs> I'm, I'm going to try not to complain about, about this this lack of motion. Let's just talk to her. Hello? What's the matter with you? You look like you've seen a ghost. So, did Ambassador What's-His-Name demote you? For crashing that runabout, I mean. So, Quark's not here, I take it. That's right, he had pressing business, or so he said. I think he just wanted to disappear for a while. So why would Quark want to disappear? Can I ask you something? If I tell you what I know about Quark, will you take me with you to the Gamma Quadrant? Hmm. Why would she want to go to the... Well, okay, you know, Quark's not the best boss in the world, but... Someone has been murdered, and she wants to leave. Possible motive there, but I don't see what she would want to... It doesn't seem like the murdering type to me. Probably misdirection. Why do you want to go to the Gamma Quadrant? I just don't belong here, alright? I want to get out! You think Quark's involved in Carrick's death? Carrick? Dead? I don't believe you. It's true. Murdered, actually. Murdered. But... You hadn't heard? From Quark or anybody? No. Someone killed him in his room. Oh, it was gruesome. Really? Go on. The murderer used a molecular inhibitor. It dissolved him. Dissolved him. We don't know who did it. Odo and I are looking into it. I see. So the killer could still be here? On the station? Possibly. Do you have any theories about who might have killed Carrick? Theories? <gasps> Theories? Look, a man is dead, on top of everything else. <sighs> That's what I hate about this civilization we live in. The Alpha Quadrant, where everyone is so polite. Let's discuss theories. Nobody wants to discuss what's really going on. Okay. It's like this agreement that everyone has, all right? Except I never signed it. I don't even know what it is. I didn't actually click anything there. That, that just... It's like everyone's so pleased with everything. Space stations and food replicators and a room with a view of the stars. What is wrong with you? Wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. People are still people, aren't they? Stubborn? They don't progress as fast as the technology would have you believe. Just maybe they've stopped progressing altogether. That's what I think. Quit shouting, and we'll discuss what's really going on. All right. It's my boss, Quark. He's in this murder thing up to his neck. Look, I want out of here. 
I want to go to the Gamma Quadrant. Uh, this, this is confusing. She just went on a random rant uh, about... It sounds a bit philosophical about uh, how the Alpha Quadrant works. And now apparently Quark is into this murder thing up to his neck, but she... I, I don't know. I'm confused. How is Quark involved with this murder? You don't think he did it? I don't know exactly, but he's scared. Not scared of being arrested. Scared of being killed. Who does Quark think would kill him? Those... Uh, those aliens with the fins? The Lycosians? Which ones? The red ones, the blue ones? I haven't seen any red Lycosians. They were here earlier. They'd be the ones to fear, all right? Quark snubbed them in some business deal. Tell me more about this business deal. I don't know any more than that. But they weren't happy about it. The red Lycosians, I mean. Quark's been associating with the blue Lycosians. Oh yes, they had some kind of shipment coming in. It was going to make them all rich, of course. You hear that a lot around the Davo table. Tell me more about this shipment. Was it from the Gamma Quadrant? Yeah, and it was full of latinum. Priette, one of the blue Lycosians, told me that across the Davo table. One of the red Lycosians happened to catch the remark, and that was the last time I saw them. Okay, so... We already heard the logs with the uh, Carrick saying about valuable items. Quark has obviously found out about that and is trying to set a business deal to sell them somehow, get acquire them. With these uh, red, blue Lycosians, the red ones are all snubbed and it's probable that Lycosians are in uh, fact the ones who killed Carrick. My guess is the red ones. So I guess uh, we'll see if that's the case, but th this seems fairly obvious now. And when I say fairly obvious, it seems very obvious. What happened to those red Lycosians? Where did they go? When the plasma storm began to rise, they booked a transport out, just like everybody else. Who else could put Quark in fear for his life? I don't know. Who killed Carrig? What's so inviting in the Gamma Quadrant? No bosses. Lots of room. You can find a planet all your own, Bannock. Breathe air no one's ever breathed before. That probably doesn't make any sense to you. Oh, I don't know about that. There. I've told you what I know about Quark. Also, yes, that doesn't make any sense because A, the Gamma Quadrant has the freaking Dominion, who's basically the anti-Federation at this point in the series, uh, and quite clearly a threat. She should know that. B, the Gamma Quadrant is full of alien races, just like the Alpha, Beta and Delta Quadrants, so I don't understand why she would think that's any going to be any better. Yeah, she's, she's, yeah, bad ideas, bad ideas. I mean, I'd rather stay in the Alpha Quadrant than go to the Gamma Quadrant where the Dominion are. Dominion aren't very nice people. You seem to be a little calmer now. <laughs> oh, that was nothing. You should see me when I really get riled up. Or maybe you should be thankful that you didn't. Can I return the favor in some way? You mentioned something about going to the Gamma Quadrant. Yes, I have my passage all set, then someone cheated me out of it. A Ferengi named Mox. I know it's really hard to arrange, but if you... I can't promise you anything, Johnny. But you'll do what you can. Yeah, that's what Carrig told me. And, uh, look what happened to him. You? Y you knew Ambassador Carrig? We met briefly when he was on his way to the Gamma Quadrant. Now, if you'll excuse me. Okay, that, that's an abrupt end to that conversation. But uh, at least we've learnt who the probable murder uh, murderer is of Carrig. I don't know if we can now go and speak to Odo. Maybe he has some interesting insights. Ah, and there's Quark. Let's go have a listen. Always a pleasure to hear these two uh, bicker. You have no proof of these accusations. I demand to speak to Captain Sisko. Oh, you will, Quark. And you can explain to him why we have a dead Federation diplomat on our hands. Yeah, I'm going to complain again. At least poses, they're just standing there, arms beside them. I mean... 
Might as well just be in T-poses at this point. It's just so annoying. I'm sorry. I mean, at least the screens are doing something. Ah, uh, well, we know Quark's not the murderer. Does this man have some information about the murder? No! How could I? I'm just a simple businessman. Ha! Huh. Envoy. It's Ambassador now, Quark. A field promotion. Ambassador. I had nothing to do with any killings. I've never met Ambassador Carrig. I, I have to wonder, I mean... It was the age when 3D really started to become a thing, so that they probably just wanted to try something, but it, it's just so poorly Im implemented. This would have been so much better if this was 2D pixel artwork like Final Unity. You could have done, done so much more with the animations and make it feel so much more natural. This this is by far, given the number of times I've actually complained about it at this point, both episode, last episode and this one, this by far is one of the most annoying aspects and uh, disappointing aspects of this game. Carrig was your only link to the Scythians before I got here. Did you try to bribe him, too? Bribe? What are you talking about? I told you I never met him. This is all some kind of tragic misunderstanding. Lock him up, Mr. Odo. I'll assume responsibility. He's guilty. That's a lie, Odo. This is all a misunderstanding. I'm no murderer. I wouldn't hurt a fly, you know that. What about that Klingon killed in your bar a while back? That was an accident. He was drunk. He fell on his own knife. You know that. That's not what you've been telling your customers. As I recall, the bar's been packed with people listening to your tale of the great battle. It was a promotional ploy. I'm not a killer. <laughs> okay, I, I actually quite like that. Um, that was from, I want to say, episode three, The House of Quark. That's a really fun episode where Quark gets uh, kidnapped by uh, Grilka after he accidentally kills uh, her husband in uh, Bar Brawl. And, yeah, it's, it's got a, one of my favourite scenes with Gowron where he's trying to understand, uh, as Quark's trying to explain to the Klingon High Council all these economic uh, issues that's um, being caused by Grilka's... Uh, uh, what's the word? <sighs> God, I can't think of the word now. Adversary, not as good as any. Um, and he's like, enough! You have been charged with money! to bring down a great house and it's just yeah I, I love that little scene go find it on YouTube it's great but uh, yeah N nice little tidbit call back there to uh, an episode a good episode as well when I met you earlier I walked in on your heated discussion over the view screen was that connected with the ambassador's murder uh that oh that was just a customer of mine a disgruntled one how could you tell he had a sort of thinned crest on his head and he was warning you about something. Crest? Ah, a Lycosian? Quark, you haven't been associating with the Lycosians from the Altair group, have you? Really? What's the Altair group? A bunch of petty mercenaries disbanded by the authorities on Altair 7. Two Lycosians from the group were trapped on the station when the last transport failed. Well, well, well. What bad company you've been keeping, Quark. This murder could have some very serious reverberations. As you know, Ambassador Carrick participated heavily in the Jellicoe talks. The Cardassians were extremely grateful for his contribution. They may take exception to the murder of this valued asset. They are ruthless when it comes to hunting down suspects, and how they love a spectacular trial. Trial? Well, that's what they call it on Cardassia. Here, we'd call it public torture, humiliation, and execution. If word got out about your involvement... Gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm sure we can prevent that kind of unfortunate misunderstanding. I'll be glad to cooperate with your investigation in any way that I can. I'm always glad to lend a hand to the authorities. How may I be of help? Did you notice anyone who seemed unduly interested in the Ambassador or his mission? Besides yourself? 
Well, um, Lieutenant Dax seemed very curious about him. I hear she used to move in the diplomatic circles. I'll look into it, of course. Well, I'm sure we'll have more pertinent questions once the tricorder scans of Carrig's room are analyzed. Scans? It should be finished shortly. Once the results are compiled, we'll be able to pinpoint exactly who entered Carrig's room from their DNA pattern. There aren't that many people left on the station. If I had to point a finger, I'd say the Lycosians are the likeliest suspects. I've heard they're from the Altera Consortium. Yes, because we literally just talked about that. You mean the aliens that were sitting in the replomat? Yes, I've been keeping my eye on them. Didn't I see you talking to one of them over the view screen earlier? Uh, was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, a customer of mine. I hardly knew him. Of course, if you question him, they'll probably make up all sorts of ridiculous stories. Infamous liars. Imagine that. Well, I'm sure this will all be settled. I'll be on my way then. You do that. Ambassador, have a look at this for a moment, won't you? Cardassians, hmm? Okay, that, that was poorly done towards the end there, because they basically just started talking about the Lycosians. Weren't you talking about that guy on the screen? We, we've already covered that. Um, that conversation tree should have covered that. Uh, oh well. Just a bluff, but apparently a pretty good one. I'll have to warn Lieutenant Dax not to play Tongo with you. <laughs> if I know Quark, he's on his way to warn the Lycosians about the molecular scan. I'd like to see what evidence you've been able to collect. All I've got for certain right now is what the initial tricorder readings tell me. The murder weapon, the traces of tarragon radiation, and the corrosive used on the Ambassador's pad. You've spoken to Lieutenant Dax about retrieving the data? About Kerrig's pad? A standard Federation personal access display device. Or it was until someone flash scorched it with metamchloronide. So you haven't seen its contents? No, I haven't. So you're not interested in finding out what it was the killer wanted to destroy? I didn't have... Those records are our only link to Carrig's last few days. I suggest you make them a priority. I've been told you've got some training in security procedures. Interesting background, considering your origins. Tyria has an unusually low crime rate for a planet its size. It wasn't violence on my home planet that got me interested in security training. Like you, Mr. Odo. I believe in being prepared. Hmm. Where would you like to begin? So, you know, Odo having a go at us about the pad, well, we can't look at it yet because Dax is running her scans and it's annoying that we, the player character, don't tell Odo that. Also, I figured Dax would actually tell Odo that the pad's not ready to be looked at yet. Hmm. Okay, whatever. Who are your suspects? You don't really think that Quark killed Carrig? No. But I'd wager more than a spin of his Dabo wheel that he's involved somehow. What about the Scythians? They clearly had the most connection to the Ambassador. That's true. What was your impression of them? I was on my way to meet with the Scythian delegation. I'll be able to give you more information after I've opened communications with them. If I can. I'll be very interested to hear what you learn from them. I've had a guard posted at their airlock door since they docked. I doubt they could have entered the station unobserved, unless they have abilities we're unaware of. The Lycosians. Of the beings remaining aboard the station, they're the likeliest suspects. They've certainly got the histories. Petty theft, fraud, extortion, but no record of murder. Yet. Sounds like Quark. What about the crew of the station? We can't rule them out as suspects. If the killer is still aboard this station, and until I can prove otherwise, I have to assume he is, it could be any one of us. Except you. The initial scans show that the body had been decomposing for at least an hour before you... docked. Can you account for the whereabouts of the station crew? The remaining station crew were all at their posts or otherwise accounted for from the time the last transport left. Except for Ensign Ktel. Ah... A Tholian. He was molting. He's a Tholian? 
Atholian. Did, have, have Tholians joined the Federation? No. Uh, I, I guess they, one could join Starfleet, but how? They they need, like, high-pressure, 400 degrees uh, living. Uh, I guess they could have an exoskeleton or some kind of suit, but... Okay. Cool. That seems very untholian, though. Just my my two cents. And what if it turns out that the murder occurred before the station locked down? Then the killer may have escaped during the evacuation, in which case he's loose on Bajor. I can't warn the Bajoran authorities until the plasma storm dissipates. For now, we've got to assume that he or she is still on the station. What about the last transport, the one that didn't make it off the station in time? That's where I think we'll find our answers. Let's take a look at the passenger list. There were only five passengers aboard, mostly people who put off leaving till the last opportunity. Lieutenant Mret was the pilot. He's monitoring shield grids. Hasn't been out of the lower core since the transport docked. Here are the passenger records. Johnny Tharon. She's the Dabo girl, right? She is now, although I don't think she came here with that career in mind. I had to pull her in once on assault. But she was out the next morning. The victim didn't want to press charges. What happened? Apparently she had a misunderstanding with the captain of a Ferengi research vessel. Friend of Quark's, I think. Something about her fare to the Gamma Quadrant. She nearly had one of his lobes off by the time I arrived. Who's next? Rasmus Selin. Yes, the Bajoran Vedic. We met on the Upper Promenade earlier. She doesn't have any kind of security record, except for her official release documents from the Cardassian labor camps. Okay, what's the next one? Quark. Right. What's his background, anyway? Fraud, embezzlement, trafficking, conspiracy, bribery, racketeering, extortion. How far back did you want to go? No acts of violence? No murder? No. There was that incident with the drunken Klingon, but I wouldn't call it murder. What kind of criminal record do you have on him? Huh. His file's so large I had to expand the record capacity. Disappointingly few convictions, though. He's as slippery as a Klabnian eel. Which I'm sure Quark would take as a massive compliment. Why do you think he booked passage on the very last transport out? He's a Ferengi ambassador. That bar of his is his primary legal source of profit. He'd keep it open as long as there was one potential customer and a single strip of latinum left on the station. Besides, it probably took him hours to secure all his precious possessions. Let's see the next one. Kimri Renat, a Lycosian. He was a weapons expert for a second-rate criminal consortium on Altair. I've been keeping an eye on him and his partner Priet Ning since they came on board. Did that just reverse the same image? <laughs> I haven't come in contact with this species before. Lakotians divide themselves up into clans based on minor interspecies differences. Physical size, local dialects. A distinction as insignificant as skin color will set them at each other's throats. Must be an immature culture. These two are from southern Lycos. That blue coloring is a regional characteristic. The other clan was northern, similar but larger and with red skin. I broke up a confrontation between the two outside quarks. After that, they studiously avoided one another. The northerners booked passage on an earlier evacuation shuttle. That's all of them. Until we get the scans back, we can't rule any of them out. Just how well did you know the ambassador, Mr. Bannock? Well, until I start this game, not at all. And in fact, I never have, because he was dead when I arrived. But anyway, I mean, this is our choice, I guess. I don't think it really matters. I'm just going to go with the honest one. Not well enough to know who might have had this kind of grudge against him. I see. What'll the tricorder scans tell us? The molecular scans record residual skin and exoskeleton cells. The computer should be able to tell us the species, even the identity, of every being that entered the Ambassador's quarters in the last 48 hours. When will the computer be finished analyzing the scans of the Ambassador's quarters? Not for an hour, at least. We're on emergency power, so the computer's slower than usual. 
Of course, it's in emergency situations that we really need the computer's speed. Were you able to determine if anything had been stolen from the Ambassador's quarters? Not positively. But security records show that when Carrick boarded, he invoked diplomatic privilege. What for, exactly? According to the officer's log, the Ambassador was very insistent that we not scan a particular piece of his luggage. I have visual reference on the container, a small silver case, but it wasn't among the contents of his quarters. Aha, so the valuables have been stolen. Was there something about this particular piece that made you want to scan it? Not really. We routinely scan arriving traffic for weapons, incendiary devices, contraband. This station is on the outskirts of Federation Space Ambassador. You'd be amazed at what people try to bring in and out of here. So you think the killer might have stolen it? Very likely. Do you have any idea what it might have contained? I'm afraid not. Unfortunate. The killer may have these items in his possession, but that doesn't help us much if we don't know what we're looking for. What about the way he was killed? That's got to tell us something about the murderer. Yes, the murder weapon. Molecular inhibitors aren't your average sidearm. The only one I've ever seen belonged to a dead Caraxian who had an accident in our local tailor's shop. <laughs> Did uh, Garrick do something there, I wonder? Have there been any Caraxians on the station recently? Not since the incident in Garrick's shop. They seem to be avoiding the station, or perhaps our tailor ever since. But an inhibitor could be just as deadly in anyone's hands. Well, honestly, that sounds a lot more fun than what we're going through right now. Just, just to s what, what was Garrick doing, or that entire conversation, how Garrick tried to explain what happened there. I'd have loved to see that. So it's a Caraxian weapon? Not necessarily. Molecular inhibitors are used on Bajor as an ore processing device. They were one of the Cardassians' more effective tools. Can't you just run a station scan to find the weapon? Not effectively. It's just a device like any other. Until it's discharged, it doesn't give off any distinct signature. Unfortunately, it only discharges on contact with a victim's body. It's only dangerous if it touches you? But don't underestimate the threat. A Klingon Diktag can be just as deadly as a phaser in the right hands. What do you know about the Ambassador's mission in the Gamma Quadrant? He and I were part of the same delegation. The Federation was hoping we'd be able to make contact with aliens in the Gamma Quadrant that aren't tied to the Dominion. Be careful what you wish for. It might come true. What? It's an old Earth saying our Chief of Engineering taught me. Go on. What else can you tell me? That's the first reference to the Dominion so far in this game. Interesting. I'd hoped there'd be more uh, references to the Dominion. I mean, uh, surely the Dominion know about the Scythians and these drones somehow. That the show is never really clear just how far away Dominion space is from the wormhole. And it always kind of bothered me that, you know, once the Dominion became aware of the wormhole, that they didn't immediately just take control of that side of it, or at least try to uh, eventually take control of that side of it to prevent the Federation from, or anyone for that matter, from coming through. Uh, but that, that was never really di discussed in the show. Captain Sisko gave me access to his report from the Gamma Quadrant. Did it contain anything that might help us? He said he had difficulty communicating with the Scythians. Huh, he's not the only one. Anything else? He said he was bringing back some items that could turn out to be valuable to the Federation. What kind of valuable items? He didn't say. He was very vague, actually. As if he didn't want to talk about it on an open frequency. If we can find out what was stolen from his room, we may be able to find out more about who killed him, and why. Where could the Terragan radiation have come from? It could be an effect of the plasma disturbance. Lieutenant Dax has been picking up stray traces of it since the storm set in. That's all for now. I'll keep you apprised if the situation changes. Thank you, Constable. And Bannock, keep your eyes open. I don't want two dead diplomats on my hands. Alright, that was a pretty long and intense conversation. But, uh... It's good. Nice to always see, as I said, Quark and Odo having some good interactions there. Minus my complaints about the game's 
terrible lack of animations and or just the use of its animations but there's our Lycosian friends at least they're animated are they going to just stop and look at me like last time let's have a look let's get a bit closer <laughs> oh, I love it. If I go back, are they still so... Yeah, okay. I think I mentioned last time that there's no audio here other than what kind of whispering, talking. I mean, they're clearly opening their mouths, they've got drinks. Also, this doesn't seem very intuitive. I mean, why can't I move forward here? Oh, that's the wrong button. Yeah. Anyway, let's... Uh... I think I'm going to stop it, so I'm just going to go towards the Scythian area, and then I think I'm going to stop there, because I think we're in for another heavy dialogue session. Nope. Uh, this way, I guess? Look, can we actually go back to Carrick's quarters? No, it's locked. So I guess we go through the cargo bay, is it? At least they added the sound effects of the door or the hatch closing behind you. That's nice. Attention to detail there, at least. Uh, all right. Okay, this this is where I'm going to cut off this episode before we talk to the Scythians. We can do that next episode, and I think also, finally, we'll get to hear Carrick's logs. So, yeah, well, absolutely zero puzzles to solve. Uh, it's mostly just us listening to dialogue and clicking through um it, th there's not much game in this game it, it's it's us just yeah listening a lot of the time and it's not all that interesting i mean i'm i'm mostly in it for the performances uh, of the crew but otherwise i just feel like i'm kind of along for the ride aside from you know moving about the station this, this is definitely nowhere near as entertaining as a final unity, and I'm sure it's not as entertaining for the dozen or so of you that watch this. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to cut it off there, and uh, we'll resume uh, in a few days' time. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, feel free to leave any comments if you feel like it, and uh, do join me next time. Take care.